Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Welcome to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. Amen. And we just want to give the winds a mighty blow. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus is coming back again. Amen. I'm so excited. And I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Welcome to the broadcast today. Well, on today's broadcast, we're going to share a very powerful message and teaching with you today. And it is entitled, When God Asks You, What Do You Want? Amen. There are several times in the Bible where God asks people, what do you want? And I want to find out what prompted God to ask. There's two people in the Bible that I know that is recorded where God said, what do you want? And so I want to find out what did it take for them to ask God, for God to ask them what they wanted. Amen. So how would you like God to come to you right now and say, what do you want? Are you ready to answer him? If God tells you, I'll give you anything you want right now, what would you ask God for? Amen. That's what we're going to talk about today. Amen. How to get from God or how to get God's response to ask you what you want. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, hey, we thank you and we praise you for those that are watching this broadcast right now, God. Oh, God, we ask you just to have your way right now, God. We ask you to move under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Send your word, God. And that they have send the power and the anointing. Father, heal every sick body. Heal every demented mind, God. Heal. Heal mental illness, God. Heal tuberculosis. Heal cancer right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Heal poverty. The sickness of poverty, heal it now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said amen. All right, well, God bless. We're going to find out what to do to prompt God to ask you, what do you want? We'll be right back right after this. If you've been blessed by the ministry of Jitta TV and Bishop Johnson, we would love to hear from you. For prayer requests and donations, please visit us online at www.jittertv.org or call our prayer counsellors who are standing by to take your prayer request and donations 24-7 at 310 637 7086. Thanks in advance for your prayers and financial support as we continue to change lives around the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome back to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. Again, I'm Bishop Ernest Johnson, and I pastor the Jesus is the Answer Apostolic Church, and I'm hosting the Jesus is the Answer television broadcast over 47 years, amen, of being on television in the Los Angeles area. We've been on the Word Network. We've been on the Black Family Channel. We've been on BET overnight. I'm telling you, we have a long history of being on television. Yeah, we never blew up and never got famous, amen, but we have reached a lot of souls and we have baptized thousands in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of their sin and we've experienced thousands receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost, amen, in juvenile halls and jails and federal prisons and on my and in, in, in congregations and in conventions and oh my God, on the street, We've seen people saved the last 47 years of my life and my ministry. Amen. And so the ministry that God has called me to, it's not my ministry, it's his ministry, but he called me to it. So today we want to talk about how to prompt God to ask you for what you want. Amen. And we're going to go to one of the most famous stories in the Bible where God asked somebody, what do you want? And that's Solomon. So we're going to go to first, uh, Second Chronicles. Amen. Chapter one. And we're going to start at verse three. <clears throat> Second Chronicles chapter one and verse number three. Got your pencils and your papers out. All right. So look at this right here. So the Bible says, uh, actually, <clears throat> I want to start uh, in verse number seven. I'm going to go <clears throat> past the answer. Go to verse number seven. Watch what God does with Solomon. You ready? Amen. Uh, Second Chronicles one. And seven, when you see it and you got it, say amen. Let's read it together. And in that night, God did appear unto Solomon and said unto him, 
Ask, what shall I give thee? God comes to him at night in a dream. Solomon, this is King Solomon, the son of David. Amen. And we know that Solomon was a wild man. Oh, yeah, he was wild. You read the book of Proverbs. He, was a, uh, he had wisdom. And why did he have wisdom? Because he went through a lot. He went through a lot of sin, went through women, went through everything you could think of. And he was able in his last years to sit down and write the book of Proverbs to give us wisdom. He also wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. He wrote the book of the Song of Solomon, where he was chasing his love interest. Okay? So Solomon was one of the wisest and smartest, uh, wisest men and richest men that ever lived. But here comes God. Amen. Because Solomon did something to prompt God to ask him for what he needs. Now, here's the question. What do you give to somebody that has everything? He has authority. He has power. Uh, one of the other uh, great things that, that trip people out about Solomon, uh, one of the queen of Sheba, she came to see Solomon one time and they told her, man, he's got the most beautiful palace. He got his servants. He got gold plates and, and, and forks and all that other stuff. And the scripture says when she came to see him, she said, boy, they wasn't lying. Man, everything is in line. The servants are in line. The gold is in line. The temple's in line. The, so the soldiers are in line. The people are in line. Everything was in line in his house. Okay? But was that the thing that tripped her out? No. What tripped her out is that Solomon, with all that he had, went to the house of God and knelt down and talked to God with the beggar and the middle class and everybody else, he put his kingship to the side and went to the house of God. Amen. So that is, the scripture says, blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall see God. So the, the Bible says, blessed are the poor in spirit. He didn't necessarily say the poor in pocket. See, you could be living in a mansion, millions of dollars, your kids doing good, best schools, you got your own airplane, you got your own big company, you got all that, but you're not poor in spirit enough to say, I need God. Amen. So the scripture says, what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? So here's a man <clears throat> that Elon Musk couldn't get on. Amen. The, the, the person that created Apple couldn't get on. And those of you that are watching me, you can't get on Solomon. I don't care if you got $20 million in the bank. I don't care if you're a billionaire. You can't get on Solomon. Solomon was a trillionaire in his day. And so uh, his son, his dad, was David. David made a lot of mistakes. But God called David a man after his own heart. Why? Because he had a sense enough to repent. He had sense enough to not let his riches, not let his money get in the way, amen, of him loving God. So Solomon went through all this crazy stuff. He was wild. But at the end of his life, he sat down and he wrote this book, Second Chronicles, which is the chronological order of the kings. And here the Bible tells us, amen, that in verse, uh, uh, Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse number 7, and you know, I feel the goosebumps. I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost because God, in the middle of all that Solomon had going on, he had a heart for God. And so look what it says here. And in that night, God did appear unto Solomon and said unto him, ask what I shall give thee. What do you want, Solomon? You know, and so look what Solomon said. And Solomon said unto God, thou hast shown great mercy unto David, my father, and shown great mercy uh, and shown great mercy unto David, my father, and has made me reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David. So he's fulfilling the promise of his father. Now, he's not fulfilling the promise of wealth and running the company and running all these big things. This wasn't the promise that God made to David. The promise that, De that God made to David was that his throne would last forever. And if you do your studying, Mary was born under the throne of David. De she was in the lineage of David. Amen. And so Jesus was an offspring of David. Amen. So his throne still remains to this day, even through Jesus Christ. 
So look what it says here. Now, O Lord, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established. Okay? For thou hast made me king over the people like the dust of the earth in multitude. So what is he saying? It's millions of Jews here that this man is overseeing. Okay? So understand, he did not get caught up in his riches. He was caught up in his purpose. Many of you are caught up in your money. You spend your whole life trying to manage your money, trying to invest, trying to make more money. You know, money, 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 money. You're all wrapped up in the money. You, you, you got so much money. You, you buy more apartments, more buildings, more this, more that, more that. Then bim, bam, bim, bam, you die. God comes to you and says, this night shall I require thy soul of thee. And then who shall all that stuff belong to? Amen. Even the uh, owners of In-N-Out Burgers, they were saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, died in a plane crash and left the empire to their one daughter. And their daughter is tattooed out and driving racing cars <laughs> in the name of In-N-Out Burgers. Amen. So In-N-Out Burgers is one of the most expensive, most not expensive, but yeah, they're expensive, but it's one of the simplest greatest franchises in Southern California and now they're stretching you know across the United States it is a very successful franchise it is not uh, 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 individually owned it's one corporation they didn't nobody can buy into in and out burgers amen it is one corporation that owns all of these restaurants they have thousands of restaurants they are the one of the most successful hamburger uh, joints or hamburger restaurants in the United States and in the world. What makes them so successful? Amen. Mom and dad started out tithing. They tithe off of their inheritance. They, if they're, if they tithe millions of dollars a month from their income. They were tithers. They supported the church. They give to the church. The Marriott Hotels. It was started, amen, by uh, uh, Richard, Richard Marriott, and he was like a Mormon, but he had faith in God, you know, but what did he do? He tithed off of all his real estate, all his money. So you look at Donald Trump, <clears throat> Donald Trump, I don't know if he's a tither, but look at all the trouble he's going through, amen, but the point I'm saying is there are companies that are multi-billion dollar companies that minister and support the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here you are, you're trying to build more barns, trying to do more things. Just like the rich guy said, I got all this money. I'm making more money and more money. So let me buy 50 more Teslas. Let me build a 10 car garage. You know, like I know of a chic, you know, I, I personally worked with somebody that went shopping for a uh, in, uh, in this country, buy cars and ship them over to him. He has a, parking garage like the ones you see downtown LA and he has over a thousand cars brand new uh, collectors cars all that other stuff but the scripture says this what shall a man you know what shall a man profit if he gained the whole world and turn around and lose his soul Amen. I, I, they, they, they did a special on Tyler Perry's mansion. His mansion is on 4,000 acres. His house is in the middle. Amen. And 4, 000, it takes you 20, 30, 40 minutes just to get to the door. Amen. But what shall it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul? Amen. You build all this house. When you die, who's going to afford it? Who's going to be able to take over after you die? Amen. So that's what the scripture says. What will you give in exchange for your soul? What will all this do? I had I, I counsel multimillionaires. Yes, God sends them to me. Even though I'm a pastor, <clears throat> he put me in those arenas. And I have multimillionaires that own 20 apartments and houses and everything and sit in my office and cry because their kids are on drugs and they don't know what to do. Their, their, their wives have left them. Because they become uncontrollable, amen, because of their money and the, the, the power that that money seems to give them this feeling. So here we're talking about Solomon, who's the son of David. And, and the scripture says, God comes to him and says, what do you want? And Solomon said unto God, thou hast shown great mercy unto David, amen, my father, and has made me reign in his stead. And now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David, my father, be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust, even, uh, a dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now. This is what he's asking for. Okay. He didn't ask for another dollar. He didn't ask for more land. 
He didn't ask for another billion dollars. He didn't ask for another corporation. He did not ask for uh, some more women. Because, he, because you know, Solomon, <clears throat> Solomon was a pimp player. Amen. I'm telling you, he was a pimp player. He had a thousand women. He married 700 women and 300 concubines. And what does that mean? And, and he, didn't have, they didn't, he didn't have to file. They didn't have to file child support on him because he bought every last one of them wives a house and the concubines houses. And he, he fed them. He took care of them. Solomon was a real pimp. Amen. Some of us calling ourselves pimps. And, and, and you, can't, you don't even have a bus pass in your pocket. This man took care of his thousand women and their children. So if it was a thousand women, just say it was about 700 more kids, 1,700 people. He put them through college, put them through school. That's how rich this man was. But with all that he had, God left him the commission to build the house of the Lord, to build the house of God. Amen. He changed his life at the end. And, 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 and David left him a commission to do what? Build the house of the Lord. So look at what he asked for. Verse number 10. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge this thy people who are so great? He asked. For what he needed to, 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 to guide, to judge, to teach, and to bless God's people. That's what he asked God for. He didn't ask. You know, they say, uh, when I was in uh, school, we used to say, we don't need another mountain. We don't need another valley. But we need more love. We need more love. And the Bible says God is love. We need more Jesus. We need more love. You're sitting in your house. You're sitting in your panel houses. You're sitting in your houses all in Oceanside. You're sitting in Manhattan Beach. You, got, you, got, you get up in the morning, Rancho Palos Verdes. You get up in the morning and your, the beach is your, your, your sunrise and sunset. I know. <clears throat> I had to stay there temporarily. Amen. With someone when I was going through transition. And amen. It's amazing. You wake up in the morning, the sun is rising on your windows. You go to bed, the sunset. Amen. You live in a place of peace and there's not a lot of noise and you're in the middle of a of land with trees all around you, fruit, fruit trees and land and everything. Amen. And when it's at nighttime and, and, and you keep, keep the gate closed, because I know I watched out there and I saw coyotes and, and all kinds of stuff running up in the mountains and stuff. Amen. So, but the point I'm saying to you, you have everything to make your human life comfortable. Solomon had everything. He had servants. He didn't have to cook. He sat at the table. They served his meal. He, they took care of everything. They did the gardening. He did nothing but rule the kingdom. But when God asked him, what do you want? He said, keep the promise to my, to my father, David. And David is the one. You know why we have a church today? You know why we have a temple today? Because David desired to build a house for the Lord. The Bible says, you know what prompted David to build a house for the Lord? <laughs> and I challenge you. I challenge you sitting up on your throne. I challenge you sitting up on that, that hill in Orange County. I challenge you in Rancho Palos Verde. I challenge you in Manhattan Beach. I challenge you if you're in the NBA. I challenge basketball players. I challenge business owners. I challenge every one of you right now in the name of the Lord Jesus, amen, to begin to focus on building a house for the Lord Jesus Christ where these kids can be helped, where homeless people can be taught how to raise themselves up and not be homeless. We don't have to just give them a home. They can raise themselves up by the power of the Holy Ghost with what? Knowledge. What did Solomon ask for? What did Solomon ask? God said, what do you want? What did he ask for? He said, we don't need another mountain. I don't need another Tesla. I don't need another mansion. I don't need another 40,000 acres. I don't need gold bars. I don't need anything. This is what I need. I have to live for your people. Amen. For your people. I want to live for your people. But what do I need? I can give you money right now to feed you. Tomorrow you're going to be hungry. I can give you clothes right now, but if you're homeless, tomorrow they're going to be dirty. I need to give you something that's going to last. And what's going to last? Look at what he said. 
He said, give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people. For who can judge thy people who are so great? I need wisdom. I I need to know how to do your will. I need to know, God, what you want me to do. And I'm going to tell you what God wants you to do. He wants you to begin to pray and support the ministry of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you are sitting here right now. If you sold $10,000 into this ministry, it would help us to continue to stay on the air. It would help us to continue with the homeless program. It would help us to continue to feed. It will help us to continue youth programs. It will help us continue to bless people with clothes and food and, 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 and tutoring for kids. It will help us do all of that. And you know what? You don't have to do nothing but just support this ministry. Sow the best seeds that you can so that we can do the work for you in the name of the Lord. And you will be rewarded just as much as we are out here in the trenches. Amen. I don't want to buy a Tesla or Rolls Royce and all that other stuff. I want to help another child. I want to help another teenager. I want to help somebody go to college. I want to help somebody find, first of all, find Jesus Christ. Because there's no other miracle that's going to do anything but you knowing Jesus Christ when you leave here. Because when you die... The same grave, same size grave that they put Michael Jackson in, same size grave that they put Elvis Presley in, is the same size grave they're going to put the bum in if they don't cremate him. So what did he ask for? Wisdom to go in and out among God's people. I don't need nothing else. I don't need money. I don't need all that. Some of you don't need nothing. You don't need no money. Some of you need a miracle. Some of you, your children are on drugs. Some of you, you your children are lunatic. Your kids are doing stuff, getting high, smoking uh, pins, amen, smoking weed, doing all these crazy things, and you have no control over your life, and you have no control over your wife, you have no control over anything, but you need Jesus. Look what Solomon said, give me these things. And God said to Solomon, because this was in your heart, what he's asking for is not fake. You know, you got a lot of people like, let me take pictures. Let me go to Africa and take pictures with little poor kids so people can give me millions of dollars so I could buy a mansion, buy me some Rolls Royces and all this other stuff and give $500 to the little kids. That's deception. That's a lie. Amen. But there are people in the trenches who are giving their lives to help people. Amen. There was a woman in Watts. She has a, a ministry called the Women of Watts, uh, Dr. Lydia Friend. And, and the people from a, a certain magazine, they came to watch and posed as though they were homeless. They, can't, they act like they was homeless and they, they went to one group and said, hey, we need some help. And they told them no. So they came to her group and said, hey, we don't have nowhere to go. We need, we need some help. And she got up in the middle of the night, went and got them blankets, went and got them you know, a place to stay, got them a hotel room, all that. They turned around and said, because you have shown us so much kindness, we were looking for you, a person that really cares about human beings, that cares about helping, that cares about the homeless, that cares about people in need. Because you do that, we're going to support what you do. We're going to support your march every year. Amen. With thousands of dollars. Amen. God wants to give into those who are doing it from their heart. Solomon asked it from his heart, not to show off, not to be seen. He did it from his heart. And look what the scripture says. And God said to Solomon, because thou, this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, and honor, nor the life of thy enemies, neither hast thou asked me for long life. These are the things that people normally will ask God for. These are the things, that's all you ask God for. Instead of saying, Lord, show me where, how I could bless Jesus' answer ministries. Show me how I could bless the Rush Crusades. Show me how I could bless the Prodigal Youth Foundation and help these kids, amen, maybe go to college and change their lives and, 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 and fight and, and defeat all the elements that are against them so that they can win. Instead of you praying for that prayer, oh God, give me another company. Let me get another trillion dollars. What are you going to do with it? Brag about it? It's just bragging rights. And so look what he said. He said, yet, he said, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for yourself that you may judge my people over whom I have made thee king. You ask me wisdom and knowledge and understanding to do your job to minister to my people. And that's what God is saying to you. Wisdom and knowledge are granted unto thee. I'm going to give it to you. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor such as none of the kings have ever 
have ever had that have been before thee, neither shall there be any after thee have, have the like. And Solomon came from his journey to the high place that was at Gibeon to Jerusalem and from before the tabernacle of the congregation and reigned over Israel. I want to say this. Our time is up right now. Join me for the next broadcast. I'm going to give you the answer. And you see what God did to Solomon. You see where Solomon's heart was. Where's your heart? Where's your heart? I'm asking you to sow seeds right now into Jesus is the answer. The cash app is on the screen. The Zell is on the screen. Amen. Our writing address. You can call the number and they'll give you the address. Please let this be a year that you're going to sow into kingdom work. Not into a church, but into kingdom work. Sow into this ministry today. Amen. Help us continue to stay on this television station. Help us to continue to feed. Help us to continue. We're feeding multitudes. We're praying for multitudes. The Rush Crusade is saving thousands of people around the world. Amen. So into that and watch God bless you and multiply what you got going on. Amen. Well, God bless you. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Don't forget to get the free prayer cloth and anointed oil. All you got to do is call the number on your screen and tell them Bishop Johnson said I can get the uh, oil and the cloth. And the cloth, I think it's Acts chapter 19, where the demons were cast out. It's for casting out demons, them demons on your children, them demons in your house, cast those demons out, and to heal all sickness and disease. Amen. We've been praying over these for years, and we want you to have one absolutely free. Well, we love you. God bless you. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. Amen. Saying, join us next week so you find out what exactly Solomon did to prompt God to ask him what he wanted. All right? God bless you. And remember, no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.